this is September 21st. We are in Lincoln, Massachusetts at the Commons in Lincoln. And this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Jim Ramsey. Our camera person is Maureen Sullivan. And we're very privileged to have with us today Conrad Wade Tambor. Welcome, Wade. Good to see you. Thank you for being with us. May I ask uh, where, or <clears throat> what, when you were born? What? When were you born? October 12th, 1932. Okay. And where were you born? In, uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> uh, California. It was in California. California. In California. I was trying to think of a okay. location. Okay. Uh, and I think you, uh, at one point, did you live in Pasadena or that, that neck of the Alhambra? We lived in, in Alhambra. Alhambra, right. California. So California. So Southern California. Yeah. Okay. Could you tell us a little something about your life growing up? Did you have brothers and sisters or? Uh... No, I was an only child. Okay. Well spoiled. Spoiled, okay, <laughs> as often the case, yeah. right, good. And so you grew up in Southern California. That's right. I see. Uh, and did you live mostly in the same town in Alhambra, or did you move around some in? We were mostly in Alhambra. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. And when so you were there? Did you go to like the school systems? in there, uh, like high school, elementary school? I went to high school and elementary, but then... In Alhambra or Southern California? It was, it was in that area, but I'm not sure it was actually Alhambra or not. Right, okay, okay. So now, uh, moving to today, what is your mar marital status? Are you, are you married? Married. I see. And uh, how long have you been married? How long have we been married? I'm going to say, yeah, it's a long time. 63 years. Yep, about. Good. And do you have children? Well, no. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think you have three children. Good. Okay, that's fine. And uh, these are all grown children. All grown. And you have, uh, they're all married, right? Your children are married and they have children? Yes. So you have three grandchildren. That's, that's wonderful, wonderful. So you, you, you were relatively new to this place, to the commons in Lincoln. Where did you live before you came here? Was it Lexington, Mass? A Lexington area, but I'm right. not sure of the exact area. Right, I think it was Lexington. I think you told me before that you actually came to Lexington in 1964. So you're a long time resident of yeah. this area and here in Lincoln, we're close to, we're right next door to Lexington. So this has been your home, this area, for a long time. That's correct. Well, 50, no, six, yeah, almost 60 years, 50, 55 years, actually. Probably. Okay. Well, good. Thanks for that little bit of background. Uh, so you entered the military. Um, uh, where and when did you enter uh, the military? Well, in Southern California, but okay. I'm not exactly sure what the dates were. I think you told me at one point that you may have gone in around 1955. That's, that's exactly that right. That sound right? Yeah, that's it. That sound right. Yeah. And I think you also said that you eventually, you went into the Navy, right? That's correct. And you were in... You were an officer in the Navy. Eventually, yeah. So you went to officer candidate school in, not, New, in Newport, no? No, not, not yes. in Newport, yes. Right, the officer candidate. And that was basically your initial time in the Navy. So this was right, was this after college? Oh, yes. you went to Occidental, didn't you tell me you went, went to, to Occidental? Occidental, yeah. Which is also in California. And then after Occidental, you went to Officer Candidate School in the Navy. That's correct. And that was in Newport, Rhode Island. So that brought you, had you ever been east 
before? No, uh, not, not really. So, so basically that was your mm -hmm. first move east. And why, why did you go into the Navy? Do you remember what, why you decided you wanted to do it in 1955? Because there was a draft and I didn't want to be drafted. <laughs> okay. Well, that's so cool. I, I picked the Navy as a preferred choice. I see. You, you thought that would be better than uh, the Army or the Air Force. Or the Marines. Great. Well, at least the, the, the Navy stuck out as a preferred right. venue. Right. So, uh, did any family or friends join with you when you did that? Or were you kind of, was this just on your own? You just decided? Pretty much on my own, yeah. Right. Okay. So, you went to officer candidate school, which is kind of basic training, if you will, yeah. for, off, for naval officers. And what did you do? What, what was it like uh, at Officer Candidate School? Did you, did you have some things you had to study and some you know, physical type stuff you had to do? We had a lot of physical activity and then obviously uh, we went through a, a series of uh, question and answer to build up some knowledge about what we were, what we were doing, what we were going to do. So you really learned how to be an officer we, in the Navy. We got, we got conditioned there. Yeah. Right. I mean, you probably learned about navigation on a ship. I, I know you didn't spend much time on board ship, but military history naval history, the great battles, all that stuff. But you also did a lot of physical activity, marching and... Oh yeah, very much, very active. Was it, a, it was a rigorous it, physical it, it was a good, rigorous, rigorous, rigorous program. I can't even get it out. <laughs> good. Well, good. So what'd you, I mean, overall, did you enjoy the experience? I mean, was it challenging? Uh, Tough. I mean, what did you think of all of the military authority that, that you were suddenly exposed to? Yes, sir. No, sir. Uh, all of that stuff. Did you? I got pretty good at it. It didn't. It didn't bother me that much. Right. So okay. I was comfortable with. That was what what you did. <laughs> yeah, you had you had to do it. Yeah. Right. Um, so after you completed officer candidate school uh, in Newport, and that, you recall how long that was? Was it a few months? I think it was a less than six months. Right. Did you have any other training beyond that? Uh, like, did you go to some kind of specialized school or that sort of thing, or did you go right off to your first I, duty station? I just followed the what was put in front of me, which was okay. So you got step, yeah. so you got a set of orders. Yeah. To go to your first duty station. Yeah. Now, when at this point you then were an ensign. That's correct. In the navy. In the navy. Right. Or navy reserve. Navy reserve. Okay. So what was your uh, what obligation did you were you committed to? Do you remember? Was it was it three years? Duration was two years. Huh? Right. Three. Three. Yeah, three. I thought it was two. But. So you had a three year commitment yeah. once you completed. So, and this was in 1955 that you embarked on this course. Yeah. Okay. So, 55, that puts us uh, a couple of years after the end of Korea, because the Korean War and quite a few years before the start of the Vietnam War. So, and I guess at the same time, this was also when the Cold War was pretty hot. Yep, that's correct. Okay, the mid fifties. Fallout shelters and all of that sort of thing. I mean, I do remember, I mean, I was 12 years old at the time, but I, I do recall that era. So you were an ensign in the Navy, uh, and uh, did you have any choice 
as to what your first duty station would be? Not re re really. It, it, we started out to be uh, someplace in the uh, east, and I wasn't particularly happy about that, so they said, okay, we'll take care of it. We'll send you the ADAC. <laughs> <laughs> so when you said you didn't want to go to the east, they sent you about as far west as they could. <laughs> and that far west, so where, what was your first duty station? Yeah. ADAC, Alaska? Yeah, ADAC, Alaska. I see. And t tell it, t where, where is ADAC, Alaska? It's uh, almost in uh, the... Uh, well, it's, it's pretty far north and, and west, so. And it's out. Or it's east, actually, I should say. It's actually out in the, the Aleutian it's Islands. In the, in the Aleutians. Right. So it's, it's off the mainland. And ADAC, as I recall, actually I was reading something that said ADAC is the, most, is the westernmost city in the United States. That's, um, that's true. Yeah. So uh, it is way out there. Okay. So you, were you married at the time? Yes. Okay. So you and uh, your wife Adele flew to ADAC? Well, I went out and then you came out afterward. Okay. I'm not sure what the elapsed time was. Okay. okay. Uh, so what was, what was happening on ADAC? What, 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 what was the, what was the naval activity that was going on? Was it an air, a naval air station? There was a there was an air station there, and there was also a kind of a, an intelligence a gathering activity. Intelligence yeah, gathering. Yeah, try to try to okay. You know, tap into whatever was going on. Right. From a, the little bit that I read about this, it sounded like one of the main things that was going on was looking for Russian submarines. That's true. Uh, I guess by then, of course, the Japanese threat was all gone, but being an ADAC, you were basically halfway to Russia from Alaska, right? So, so Russian submarines, so, and that was probably also the intelligence uh, activity was, was tied to that. So. And you were, uh, and so you were part of a unit that was uh, that was involved. Well, I, well, in this I was more in the support side rather than the actual intelligence work. So okay, so you were uh, basically supporting in some sort of administrative. Yeah, that's true. Role because it was by at that time it was from what I understand it was a pretty good sized base. Wasn't it was it? big, yeah. And there were again, it was mainly an air base. So there were lots of these, I think, P-3 Orion aircraft? The P-3s are the one I remember, yeah. Did you ever fly on a P-3 Orion? I did not try to fly myself, although I, I originally was going to try to join the uh, air group, and uh, I think we had a little discussion about that as not being a good idea. <laughs> so, you mean you, yeah, this was while you were back in at uh, at Officer Candidate School? Yeah. So you were thinking about naval aviation? Yeah. Huh. So that I mean, obviously, when you're in the Navy, and I mean, one of the choices is naval aviation or being on board ship or whatever. So you actually gave some thought to aviation. Uh, not too much. Not that much, no. Okay, okay. Okay. But you observed, uh, so, but you could, you could see these P-3 Orion planes landing and taking off? That we could, and then it was a P-2V, I think it was another. P-2, okay. I see, I see. So from your observation of those, what were, what were the conditions like for those pilots. The Aleutians can be a pretty rough place, isn't it? I mean, weather-wise and... You're never sure what the weather is going to do to you. Right. So cold and rainy and windy. I mean, was it mostly that way? Was it? Was there a lot of sunshine or...? We get some, not, not that much. Okay, okay. 
So you had some sense of what was going on around you, this aviation operation, and then you were involved in the administrative, the administrative enterprise. Yeah, the support side. I see, I see. So where did you live uh, on ADAC? Were you in, in government housing? We or, eventually got there with uh, or when with Adele, and she was there. Although before that, I was, you know, in a kind of a bachelor officer. Yeah, B O B O Q. Bachelor B -O -Q, officer. Order, that's it. Right. Okay. How long after you arrived did Adele come to join you? Probably less than a year. Probably. Oh. Okay. Three okay. or four months. So then you moved into uh, kind of uh, g government housing. Mm -hmm. Was there any civilian activity on ADAC or was the whole thing government base? Well, there was some civilian support activity. But, so, okay. Yeah, but prim primarily a, an air base. I, I see. So the civilians probably lived off the base. Mm. They can't. Or I maybe was, I was a civilian. She, she was a civilian. Okay. I, you did work for the Navy. I'm talking to uh, Wade's wife now, Adele. I, I see. was in the department where we requisitioned food for the whole island. Oh, I see. We ordered all the food. It came in from the ship. The food came in. That's right. So you had to be the whole base had to be supplied, supplied by right. ship. So you were you Adele were involved in requisitioning the food uh, for that. Could the ships come in at any time, or did they have to? I mean, was this a, basically a year-round type of operation, like like once a month, or? Absolutely. Yep. Okay, that's interesting. I guess that's one of the aspects of life on a an island that, to say the least, is remote. Um, it's a different way of of li living. So. When you were, um, so you lived in government housing. Uh, did you have children, or did, uh, were children born to you while while you were on? No, I think maybe one. So your your first your first child was born on Adak, Alaska. Is that that's right? it. Yes. That would that's a distinction to say that one is born in Adak. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And so, did you? Ever, I mean, once you you once you were there, did you basically stay there? Did you ever did you ever leave during your tour of duty there? Did you ever leave Adak? I think there were a couple of things we that I left on, but it wasn't it wasn't a routine. So I we were there all the time, basically. Okay. But you had some something to do with your d duties that took something, you away. Some things that I. I oh, okay, but I mean, like, did you go off and and visit family? No. No. You basically just stayed there. We were there. So, what was day to day life like? I mean, was it was it exciting? Was it boring? Was it <laughs> like life any place else? It was well. We were fortunate to be together, so that, that that's great. That made a big change. It could be, and you had to you know, go through learning to live together properly. I see. So you had just so you had you were just married. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Just before you went to, okay. And you had a child, and so. You must have met a lot of people. A lot of, I mean, you developed friendships with other Navy people there on the island, and uh, other support groups. Right. So, and what did you do? I mean, you worked d during the day. What did you do? Did you do any? Have anything to do for fun? <laughs> Mostly things we'd have to cook up for ourselves. You made your own fun. Yeah. I see. I think you told me something. Salmon at, fishing. Hmm? Salmon fishing. Oh, oh. Uh, Adele said something about salmon S fishing. Yeah, that's right. You liked it. So how was the salmon fishing? Was it good? Did you catch salmon? Yeah, it was something to do. So. <laughs> right, right. 
Did you actually cook them once you, or keep them and cook them? Yeah, we, we cook them, but I didn't cook them. <laughs> no, but, but your wife Adele did. Yeah. That's great, that's great. Did you tell me uh, at one point, I think you said something about uh, b bowling? Was yeah. bowling something that, that you was a That was an uh, activity that they had a bowling alley up there and you could go out and create uh, games among other members of the So circuit. you actually had a kind of a bowling yeah. league? Yeah. Right, right. And there was something else about entertainment, like you, uh, some kind of a theater, or you did you put on plays or something like that? That I don't remember. Okay. Well, anyway, that uh, uh, so, uh, and so, so how long were you stationed uh, on ADEC? It was at least a year, if, okay. not, if not more. And were you? Uh, were you promoted uh, during your time there? Well, I started out as an incident. I think I came eventually up to uh, Lieutenant J.G. Lieutenant Junior Grade, right? Yeah. Good. And then Lieutenant. Then for, that was that was after leaving there, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, but you were, so you were there for a year or a year plus or? A year plus. Something like that. So were you glad, so when it came time to leave ADAC, were you glad to be leaving ADAC or would you, <laughs> were, were you? Kind of mixed feelings. Mixed feelings, okay. I'm you know, glad to be able to get off the island, but at the same time, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, familiar place and it was comfortable. So it was basically a good place to be? Yeah, for me. For you? And I think for... That's great. That's great. So, so after ADAC, uh, so you still had a couple of years or a year and a half, a couple of years left for your tour. Uh, where did you go next? Was it San Francisco? I think we came back to San Francisco. I'm not exactly sure where in the city. It's outside the city. The south side of the city? Outside. Uh, I'm sorry, outside the city. So you, so, uh, so when you were in San Francisco, was this at a, at a Navy, uh, at a Navy base or, uh, my, it was some kind of a naval installation. Do you recall what it was that in I, San Francisco? It was not in the installation in the city. It was right in the city. Yeah. The city of San Francisco. That's quite a that's a tremendous contrast from ADAC. Yes, it was. <laughs> I think it was having put in purgatory for the first year. <laughs> I was given a break. <laughs> so uh, now you being a California boy, you you must have known something about San Francisco, right? Oh yeah, that was. I mean, you had spent time. I presume you had spent time there, as you were growing up. Mm. No. Uh, you were pretty much in Southern California, so. Yeah. Did you? Uh, so you, were were you also involved in administrative type activities when you were in San Francisco? Uh, um, at this Navy office, sounded like that. What it was? Well, it was kind of a like it was, once again a support activity. Support activity you know, of some type. Of some type, right? In the Navy, and probably by this time you were getting to be a lieutenant junior grade. Yeah, lieutenant JG, and uh, so did you live? So you must have. Did you live in the city, or you lived out? Well, we had uh, housing available to officers if they had their wife out there. No, we had an apartment. Did we uh, actually have an apartment? Apartment in the city? Mm -hmm. I see. So what did you think of city life in San Francisco? It must have been pretty nice. Yeah, that was, uh, that was better than ADAC. <laughs> so let's see. This. So this must have been, so roughly time frame, like 50 Six or fifty-seven time frame. Um, that's about right. Time frame. So, 
Um, that was certainly well before all of the political turmoil and stuff that in the late 60s. So uh, I, San Francisco must have been a calmer place then. Um, but it's beautiful, right by the bay, uh, San Francisco Bay, et cetera. Did you get a chance to do much exploring of uh, the area, or pretty, pretty, pretty much just stayed in the in the city? Pretty much limited because we didn't, you know, we had to get some kind of assured transportation to right. do anything else. Right. Okay. So you were at this post. Or I think you told me before, in the vicinity of, or maybe a little less than a year, um, um, which uh, which then took you to your, I guess that that was your second duty station. So then you went to to where? Was it a the? I think you said Mare Island. Mare Island is it? And Mare Island is close to San Francisco. Yeah, right? very close there. And in proximity to one another. Right. And uh, I, I believe I understand that Mare Island was a uh, was a shipyard. Yeah. Right. In fact, I think Mare Island had maybe one of the largest naval shipyards. I think it produced a whole lot of ships for World War II and, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, so was there still active, there must have been active shipbuilding or at least ship repairing. More repairing than anything more, else. More repairing. Uh, so let's see, so by this time, well it was either from mid-57 kind of on or something. When, when did you, so in 58 was when I guess your duty assignment was up. So between 57 and 58, you were at Mare Island. And is that, uh, did you live on the base there too? Or did you live uh, in off-base housing? We had off-base for a while, but. It was, it was base housing. Really nice? Yes. Really? Yeah, separate houses. Oh, that's right. That's right. It was yeah. separate quarters for each house. Okay. Yeah. And so the main function of the, of the shipyard was to repair ships, uh, probably, or get that's them right. ready to. So they had dry docks and all kinds of ship repair facilities. Did you, uh, so were you involved in that activity directly or? Well, in an administrative role, again, I never right. did any of the maintenance. If right. You no, I mean, you, as an officer, you have more of a kind of administrative or supervisory type uh, role. Were there other officers, other naval personnel? I know shipyards employ a lot of civilian workers, but were you there? Were there other naval officers there, there were, and not, enlisted people there? Uh, Kind of in your same group? Yeah, a relatively small group. Small group, okay. But I'm just trying to think of the command structure. Was there like a Navy captain or something who was uh, who was in charge of the shipyard that you kind of reported to or? Uh... That I don't remember. Okay, okay. So you uh, had an enjoyable time, I guess, uh, living in uh, at the Mare Island Naval Shipyard, working in the shipyard. I should say, I want to go back just for a bit, because I sure. neglected to mention, back to ADAC. Um, just for reference, uh, I learned that ADAC really became a base during World War II, when uh, the Japanese had actually actually occupied some Aleutian Islands that were farther out, yeah. like Attu and Kiska. And so finally they set up a base uh, there to then try to get the Japanese, but dislodge them from those other Aleutian Islands, which I guess they eventually did. But So there's a, there's a deep history in ADAC, and I, I guess sometime between World War II and when you got there, the base was shifted to uh, this Navy function of 
looking for Russian submarines. So basically, that's a little bit of history, just for the record. Uh, well, good. So, uh, so now we're at probably sometime in 1958, and uh, your tour of duty, uh, your commitment, you've completed your commitment. Yeah. So what did you think at that point? Did you, did you, I know that you got out of the Navy at that point, but did you give any thought to staying in I the think, Navy? I think I, I thought about it for a while. We talked about it. I guess decided it was time to make a change back. You stayed in the reserve, though. Yeah, so, I, did, I did not leave the reserve. So you stayed as a, I mean, you were uh, an officer on, in on the Naval call, Reserve. On call, yeah. And you stayed in the Naval Reserve. Yeah. I see. So <clears throat> how long did you stay in the reserve? Boy, I guess about, you know, a couple of years. Okay. At, least. At least. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, you were dis were you discharged uh, when you were at Mare Island? Is is that was that the point when you got your discharge? Well, Mare Island was a discharge right. center. Yeah. So, just for a little bit, kind of after the Navy, what what did you do then? I think you told me before that you may have, you uh, did some work for sh Shell Oil. Shell Cal Oil, that's correct. Did, did you go kind of right to Shell uh, from, your, uh, from your Navy time? I think so. Yeah, I was, that's, that's right, in a, a management role again. With the Shell Oil Company? Yeah. Okay, okay. So you stayed in, and this was in, uh, Southern California? Yeah. So, so back to kind of the part back of California you were more f familiar with. And how, and, and uh, I, I think you told me also that you uh, went to, uh, you made a decision to go to Stanford Business School. Yes, I did. And was that pretty shortly after you got out of the Navy or after, I mean, did you work did you work long for Shell before you decided to go to Stanford Business School? It was a relatively short time, but I can't put a timetable on it. That's fine. That's fine. But, but it, was a, it was a step. So you went to Stanford Business School in the late 50s, yeah. probably. And, uh, and uh, while you were at Stanford Business School, did you, were you still in the Navy Reserve? Yes. You were? So you basically went to, what, like monthly meetings and... Uh, For a very short summer. time, I eventually dropped out of it as early as I could. Okay, okay, okay. And how long were you at, you, so you, were you at Stanford Business School to get your MBA, your Master's in Business? Yes. Okay. But I think you said, you told me before, you, you stayed at Stanford for a while, right? Yeah, I did. To, what, what were you, were you help, were you teaching there or doing research or? Well, again, mostly administrative. At the business school? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so, I believe you said that you were basically doing that actually until the early 1960s, maybe 63 or so or something. So, so you were at Stanford for a while. Did you consider? I thought about, you know, going on for a doctorate and didn't. Okay, but if, not to. So, if you'd gone for a doctorate in business, then you would have probably been there for a while and been involved in the academic track. Yeah. I see. So what, so, and since I know you moved to Lexington around 64, that must have been kind of right after the, the Stanford time? Pretty much, right? Yes. So what brought you to all the way across, all the way to the east again? 
why, why, why did you come east? Did you have a job offer or something uh, after Stanford? Yeah, that was that was the main reason. Okay, okay. And so, and as I understand it, you, I mean, you've been involved in a number of things, but, but a lot of it has been consulting work that you have done. That I have done, yeah. And pretty much on your own. I mean, you you ran your own company, is that For correct? For a while, I was operating as a, an independent. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, you did that until you retired a number of years ago. Great, great, great. So once you left, you left the Navy, uh, you went to Stanford. What was it like going on to the Stanford campus after you'd been in the Navy? I mean, did it, you know, were people curious about what the Navy experience was like? Were there other Navy, as far as you know, were there other Navy people? There were, but I, it was a relatively small cadre. Right, a small cadre, probably other military too, Army yeah. and Air Force folks who also made a decision to go to business school. Actually, that was a decision I made um, a few years later, after, after you. Um, okay, so, Did you talk much with either your friends or your family about your military experience once you got out? Or did you just kind of basically uh, move on from that? I basically moved on. <laughs> right. I see. And you stayed in the reserve, you say, for a couple of years after you got out. Uh, did you join any veterans organizations like the VFW or the American Legion or that sort of thing? No, I didn't. Okay. Okay. Um, and have you ever, have, have you kept in any kind of touch or did you ever really keep in touch with folks from any of the units that you were with? Or did you pretty much lose contact? That often happens. We lose contact. We lost, we lost contact, sure. contact pretty early. Right, right, right. Well, uh, congratulations on your mi military career. <laughs> Sounds like you had an interesting time. Uh, it, it, it must have been, I mean, so thinking back on it, and it was a long time ago, I know, but uh, so from the mid 50s to the late 50s, was it a pretty quiet time militarily? I mean, did you, well, no, the Cold War was, I mean, were you, were you or your family much concerned worried uh, about conflict with Russia. I mean, that was the big, I think, the big concern at the time. Yeah. Did, that, did that much affect you? In 56, when the Russians invaded Hungary. That was, okay. That, so that, right, so that indicated how hot the Cold War was. Mm -hmm. So this was, this was a challenging time. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, you were young and obviously moving on I guess into the world of business, so it, it uh, must not have bothered you too, too much. No, not really. Good, <coughs> good, good. Well, uh, this kind of brings us to the present, but he, I mean, here we are now in, uh, in 2019, <clears throat> which is 64 years after, well, no, it's just about 60 years after you completed your service. So that's a long time. You obviously remember um, a fair amount about it, or at least something of it. Um, let me just ask you a few questions as you look back, sure. uh, reflecting on your military service. Uh, how important was it, as you look back on it, how important was it to you that you served in the military? Another way of putting that, do you think it was a good decision to, of course well, you also might have been drafted. I was so. going to say it was a necessary decision. <laughs> <laughs> it was a necessary decision, but you... But I, uh, I think we, we made the most of it. You made the most of it. And you're happy, as you think back on it, you're happy with your decision to become a naval officer. Yep. 
as opposed to, uh, I guess you could have gone to the equivalent of Navy OCS. You could have also chosen to do that in the Army or the Air Force, but going with the Navy was a good decision. I believe it was. That's great. That's great. Do you feel that your decision to go into the service, I mean, you might not have been drafted, right? I mean, it was a bit of, it, well, what, what do you think were the risks? How likely would you have been, was it, was it, would you have been to be drafted? I think, I think it would have been, been a pretty high like, like yeah. good, yeah. Would it? Okay, that's, that's. So try to choose a, a service that made more sense was what I think we chose. It was highly likely that you would yeah. have been drafted, yeah. I see. Uh, how do you think your decision to become a naval officer and your duty that you had, how, how do you feel that that affected your life? Did it have a positive influence? I think on in total it was a, a positive experience, yeah. I mean, uh, And it matured me a little bit more. Matured you, right. I mean, I guess you do learn something about leadership, about d discipline. Mm -hmm. um, the military is <laughs> big on d discipline. Yes, it is. Uh, right, taking, giving orders, taking orders, um, and all of that sat well with you? Well, it was necessary. <laughs> I mean, you had to do it. <laughs> so you, you, you so didn't you, have a choice. You did the best of it you could. But you, it, it sounds like you think that, that that may have been of some help to you. As I you think it was. It was, it was. As, as you moved on with your life, certainly in terms of management or work or whatever. I mean, there are some parallels um, that the military can help with, so that's good. Uh, so as you look back on it, uh, is there some, was there some particularly memorable experience uh, or memorable person, I mean, just, you know, something. You talked about the salmon fishing, which of course wasn't a military experience, but just from your time in ADAC or San Francisco or Mare Island, um, is there anything you can think of, or Adele, who's sitting here with us, can think of uh, a person, an event, uh, a situation, humorous, serious, sad, etc. Or maybe there's nothing, but I'm just, you know, this is an opportunity to share um, something that maybe have been, might have been some significance at the time that may have had some influence on you. And maybe not. I mean, most, not, not all of us have those, but. I can't think of something specific. Well, and that's, I mean, in a way, that's, that's good. It was just a, a three-year it was, another, it was another step. It was, an, it was a, but it's interesting. It was really your first step. I mean, after uh, college, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, we're all, when we do this, we're all pretty young. We're just, we're wet behind the ears coming right out of college. And so it's our first job. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that sense, it's pretty important, can be pretty important. Um, so, but, on the whole, it sounds like it was a, a good experience. It was a, it was a good experience. Right, great. Well, uh, is there anything else? Is there anything that I haven't asked you or anything uh, that comes to mind that you would like to share as part of this interview? Um, the floor is yours and you don't have to say anything. I just, this is how we wrap these up. Well, I think it was a maturing process, which was was good, and that was a good experience for all of us. I, w I would say it's true for, for me. I, for, uh, in general, I think that that's true. Some people have a hard time with that, um, but those who don't, I think, benefit from the maturing. It's a rapid maturing process. It has to be, yeah. Um, and that's a good way to get started in life, in post-college life. Well, uh, if there's nothing else, 
uh, Wade or Adele, uh, then I think we've wrapped it, we'll wrap this up. I just want to thank you, Conrad Wade Tambor, well, thank for you being for, with us this thank morning you. and for sharing your a little bit of your life story. Thank you. Thank you, and we're going to get a copy of some of this at some point. All of this will be uh, made available to Good. you.